Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about all the books that I've read so far in December. I have read 15 books so far in the month of December so I'm going to be talking about those today. I've read quite a few different genres. I've read some contemporary, some monster ones, definitely already some holiday reads. So let's get started. The first one that I read this month is A Brush With Love by Maisie Eddings. This is actually the first book in Maisie Eddings' A Brush With Love series. And it's the last book that I've read in this series. So I kind of went like all over the place. I read book two first, then I read book three, and then I jumped back to book one. Um, and this one was really fun. This goes into the whole like dental work sphere like if you want to become a dentist or anywhere in that sphere like I've never read anything about that and I learned so much like I didn't know all the things that go into oral surgery or teeth cleaning and those god-awful teeth molds like <laughs> I actually learned quite a lot reading this and I think I actually really like romance books where it like teaches me something that I've never learned about before. This is the romance between two characters who are dental students at this dental school. One is like freshman and the other one is way further in her schooling. However, they are the same age. He just started his dental schooling um, later on in life. Basically, the beginning of this book is about her bumping into him and accidentally breaking one of his molds that he created and it took him forever to make it. And she's like, I am so sorry, like, I will help you. Like, it is my fault, let's go fix this. And uh, that's kind of like their meet cute moment, if you will. Their names are Harper and Dan. And Dan is smitten right from the get go when he meets Harper, when Harper bumps into him. And Harper is very attracted to Dan. However, she knows that she is about to go away to school. Like in the next year, she's gonna go to a different school. And so she's like, I'm gonna move. I can't start up anything. I am very focused on my career right now in school. But they spend more time together with like assignments and studying and their feelings just develop even harder. And it comes to a point where Harper just like, she can't, she can't have that wall up anymore. That excuse up anymore that she's moving because she cares for Dan so much. I really felt for and related to Harper at points. Harper deals with anxiety as I do. And so I really felt for her. There is a lot of triggerings in here, by the way, for anxiety. It triggered me at some point. So um, take care of yourself. If you're triggered by panic attacks or spiraling thoughts, like go into this book knowing that is what's in it. And also there is some internal ableism as well. So that's another trigger warning for you. Internal ableism when it comes to Harper thinking about herself and her anxiety. Unfortunately, a lot of us who are in the disabled, chronically ill, mentally ill community, like you have those ableistic thoughts and tendencies sometimes, and it's hard to read about in a book too. You're like, oh my goodness, these thoughts have been in my brain before. I don't think that's good. <laughs> this was just a fairly short, sweet romance. It's not my favorite in the series. Unfortunately, I would definitely give that to book number three. I feel like based on how I read these books, I think they get better and better as they go along. So. Book three is my favorite, then book two, and then book one. So it's a great read though. And I actually learned a lot about the dental world, which was interesting. I wanted to pick up a Cleo Evans book because I know she writes a lot of fantastic monster romances that people love. And I think I've only read one book by her. So I was like, let's go pick one up by her. I randomly picked one. The cover intrigued me. It's called Cosmic Kiss. I don't know about y'all, but I felt like I was so stupid <laughs> when I was reading this book. And I did not notice that there are three, three beings on the cover. I just thought there were two people in like this clenching embrace, but there's like this purple alien creature like like further down the the page. And I just, I don't know what I was thinking. I was like, how did I not notice him? Because the third POV like popped up in the book and I was like, why is there a third person? There's two people on the cover. And then I went back and looked at the cover and I was like, oh no, there's three. There's three, there's this tentacly alien dude in here that I totally missed on the cover. I think he like blends in with all the purple too much for me. So this is an MMF sci-fi monster romance. The heroine of this book is a part of a like dancing burlesque human women group that travel the galaxy, if you will. And the heroine is opening for the show for the first time ever doing one of her dances and two very powerful men on this planet are sitting front row and right when they see her they know that that is that is their mate but these two men don't get along because they are actually exes themselves <laughs> so they're fighting over this woman while having these thoughts about each other at the same time 
so <laughs> there's even one scene where like one of the guys like pins the other to the wall basically saying like she's mine you better stop but they're actually kind of like into into it <laughs> into it so it's a fun fun little read there are uh two things on one guy so you can look forward to that <laughs> next is a dnf unfortunately i dnf'd faking christmas by cindy Steele. i unfortunately just wasn't really feeling this one the heroine and the hero are teachers at a school and the heroine goes on vacation with her family she goes to like this ranch i want to say with her family for christmas and little does she know that the hero's family owns the ranch and so he's there um but she's made up this elaborate lie to her parents that she's dating him in order to get out of like the many men that her mom's trying to set her up with and so like she kind of has to eat crow or put her foot in her mouth um when he like pops up i don't know when they're like oh my gosh you're her boyfriend and he's like huh what is going on what <laughs> these two don't get along specifically because of the heroine the heroine is not personally my type of hero that I enjoy reading about. She was very judgmental and just kept judging like everything in sight. And like, that is not my, that is not the type of person I want to be in the head with. She like hated the hero, was so judgmental of him. Her stepdad like was in the doghouse from day one, even though he seems so nice, is judging her mom for like trying new adventurous things like going skiing. She's like, she never would have skied with my dad if my dad was still alive. And I'm like, okay, but people grow and people change, honey. She just really got on my nerves and I don't like judgy people. I don't like, I don't. But to save myself from insanity, I unfortunately put this book down. Ooh, next is a fun one. Oh my gosh, okay, this was so fun. This is How to Bite Your Neighbor and Win a Wager by D.N. Brin. This is an M.M. vampire romance. One of the heroes is a human though. This is about Wes and Vincent. They were actually childhood friends. I think they like lived on the same street growing up, but they haven't seen each other in years. This is paranormal set, right? Like he's a vampire, it's our world. However, like humans know that vampires exist, but they're kind of like ostracized from the world. Like they like, are outcasts um so vincent has to like hide the fact that he's a vampire to everybody like he has to work at night and he doesn't get easy access to food which for him in this case is blood right because vampires aren't treated very well there's not really open opportunities for them to feed at places like healthily like tra like transactionally like pay for blood or like that's their food there's no blood store and he is like terrified of like hurting somebody and he can't find like the underground like black market places where people sell blood so um he has decided the only way he can go about this with keeping himself alive is to sneak into people's homes and to drink from them when they're asleep his venom like has this effect where like they can't feel pain like the person he bites and so he's just hoping to like take some blood and and dip out essentially and hopefully the human will never figure it out he knows this is so wrong he knows it's very invasive he doesn't have anyone can, anyone's consent but he's like i don't know what to do at this point it's either this or die that all to say wes is one of the men that vincent decides to drink from one night and he has never tasted anything better in his entire life and normally when vincent drinks from people it's like one and done he does not go back to the same person twice because he doesn't want to get caught right so he ends up going back when he knows he should not but he cannot help himself because wes just tastes so good okay um and wes is actually in need of a vampire for a specific reason. He needs a vampire to help him with some family revenge, okay? Um, people who wronged his mother. This is a great paranormal read. I definitely recommend reading this one. I definitely feel like I should have read this one during like Halloween, October time, but it was a great read regardless, honestly. Next is this book, okay? This is Long Live the Beautiful Hearts by Emma Scott. This is the second book in her beautiful hearts duet who i definitely love this one way more than book one book one i didn't really know what to rate it it was a good read i just felt like i hated all the lying and secret keeping going on in it um i read that one last month by the way and i finally finished it the duet and who i loved this i really did i can't really speak about this one all that much because it's a second book in a duet and oh my gosh if i talk about anything in this book it's gonna be a spoiler for book number one book number one our heroine goes to college with these two guys that are best friends um and the broody best friend who is not dating her is like in love with her 
that's all I want to say. It's a love triangle romance. It's really good. You definitely also need to read both books in the duet to get the whole romance story. I definitely loved book two way more than book one, even though book one was really good. Like it's Emma Scott, like the book is gonna be good, okay? There was representation in this book that I was not expecting. I haven't heard about it from like anybody. And so I was really excited to see that rep, not excited about the way it went down. I don't want to spoil anything. That's why I'm keeping my description very vague. <laughs> I was not excited to hear about what happened to one of our characters in here, but the representation that was depicted in this book I thought was done so well. That's all I'll leave you with. It's really good. I really recommend it. Please read this duet. I don't love love triangles, but like Emma Scott writes books with like plot lines or tropes that I don't necessarily love, but she knows how to, she knows how to make me like it. Okay, next I have That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Human by Kimberly Lemming. This is the most recent book in the Mead Mishap series, um, which is like kind of like a rom-com fantasy romance series with demons and shifters and stuff. It is so fun. If you love like rom-coms, but you want it in a fantasy book, like look no further. Kimberly Lemming makes me laugh my butt off every time. <laughs> so our heroine from book one in the series, Cinnamon, has a long lost sister named Cherry. She went missing like five years ago. She can't find her um, and she's devastated. This book is about Cherry. Where's Cherry? What happened to Cherry? Cherry actually got kidnapped by a dragon um, and one day, like five years after she's been kidnapped, she's trying to escape. She can't escape and one of those drag, one of the friends of the dragon, who is also a dragon himself, pops in and is like, what are you doing here? She's like, can you please take me home? Um, <laughs> little does she know that that dragon, first time that he lays eyes on her, knows that that is his fated mate. So he thinks home is like home with him. <laughs> so that's all I'm gonna leave you with. This was a fun read. I was laughing my butt off. Alexis the Talking Sword makes an appearance in here. I love her. She makes me laugh so hard. There's like this cat creature demon thing that reminds me of the cat from Captain Marvel. <laughs> Where like, you just think it's a cat. It's not a cat, okay? <laughs> so um, it's a fun, fun read. And I did really like this Fatty Mate romance for tropes for this one. It's a dragon shifter. He shifts into a dragon. It's funny. Um, and there's Faded Mates. I definitely do recommend this one. I finally read a Sarah Blue book. This is Heat Haven, the first book in her Heat Haven Omegaverse series. I definitely would be interested in reading more books in the series Is it if it takes place in like the Heat Haven Corporation because, or like business, whatever you want to call it, because I found it so interesting. This is an Omegaverse novel. I also believe Sarah Blue writes a lot of Omegaverse books. Um, I've read a few, mainly I've read a lot of years ago Wattpad Omega Megaverse books. <laughs> that was my that was my introduction into the subgenre. <laughs> was all this the, all the Wattpad books like in high school. I read all the Megaverse ones. Okay, um, so I haven't read a lot of actually like published books with Omegaverse in them. So the heroine of this book is going to have her heat. She is an Omega, and she needs some guys to service her while she's in heat, and. The heroes are there to provide. The first hero with her gets stuck in an elevator together. So that's how that starts out between the two of them. It's fun. It's a quick read. There is trigger warning in here for one of the guys. Um, he's not a hero, but he's another guy that is part of the heat at one point um, that assaults her. So like, please be aware of that. There's a trigger warning for that. This was really fun. The, the audiobook was really, really short. Um, and I'm also just a sucker for characters who get stuck in elevators together. I don't know what it is. I've read like only like two or three, but I love them. I think uh, I love forced proximity. What am I saying, Avery? Anything with forced proximity, I'm a sucker for. So like stuck in an elevator, like I, of course, I'm going to love that. So this was really fun. So if you want to listen to a novella on audio, this one is out right now and I totally recommend it. Let me know if the other books in the series are worth the read. I would definitely be into checking them out. Oh my gosh, I need to rein myself in with this next book because I could probably talk about it like forever. This is Kissing Kosher by Jean Meltzer. I heard about this book because of Tiffany. I completely blame Tiffany from Tiff Talks Pages or Neverland Pixie on Instagram. I love her so much and she came in clutch with this book. I saw her talking about it on her stories and she's like, oh my gosh, this, this heroine, like the way she talks about chronic pain. I heard chronic pain and I was like, say it less. I put the hold in on Libby <laughs> and I'm so glad that I picked this up. This is also a Jewish holiday romance um, and I haven't read a lot of those. I'm not familiar with um, Judaism or Jewish culture whatsoever, but I loved learning so much in this book. Again, another book that I loved because I learned 
so much that I don't, I don't know anything about Judaism. I know nothing about it, but this book did so well on like teaching me about a faith that I had no, no knowledge of, like almost whatsoever. Um, and I loved that. The heroine of this book is Avital and she's the general manager and half owner of a bakery she inherited with her brother from her parents and grandparents before that, which is Best Bobka. But currently right now she is struggling. Avital has chronic pelvic pain that is taking over her life. She finds day-to-day -day life challenging and does not know what to do. She's kind of lost her spark in life. I fell for her so hard because like me, she had to give up some things and move back home with her parents because she could not take care of herself with her chronic illness. Oh, I felt for her so hard. Like I, oh, I haven't cried and because of a book in a while and this book just had me crying in the car <laughs> listening to this book on the way to work. <laughs> I was like, I need to bring it in. I need to stop listening to this or I'm gonna cry walking into work. <laughs> um, but I fell for her so hard. Every time she talked about her pain, like <sighs> I felt for her. Like the things that she's had to give up, the dreams she's had to change, like, I love her so much. I fell for her. Okay, so that's Avatar. Ethan is our hero. And he walks in one day to Best Bobka with a resume in hand and an application to start working there. Ethan gets hired to work at the bakery. Um, however, no one knows that he has ulterior motives and he may or may not be at the bakery for the right reasons at first. That's all I'm gonna leave you with. But I don't want you to think bad of Ethan because Ethan is like one of my new book boyfriends. I am in love with him, I love him so much. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Anytime I see a man help take care of somebody who is chronically ill or has a chronic illness or has a disability, caretaking to me is like a whole love language to me. Taking care of somebody, I'm getting like chills right now thinking about him and any man who does this, it just speaks to my soul. A man who is there to take care of you when you're injured, sick, when you're having a flare, whatever the case may be. He did so much research for her condition, trying to find anything that would alleviate her pain, made her a safe space at work where she could rest and recuperate. Like this man is what like almost every man should strive to be like, okay, Ethan is God tier, okay? If you're chronically ill or have chronic pain or a disability, whatever the case may be, you need to pick up this book. It doesn't all take place during the holiday season. So if you like can't pick it up right now, that is totally fine. This starts out during the holiday season and then takes place throughout the year. I do have a list of tropes for this one. We have baking, it takes place in a bakery, caretaking scene, chronic illness representation and chronic pain, rep obviously, um, forbidden romance, a hidden identity, uh, a holiday read, a photographer, the heroine Avatala is actually a photographer. So I love that. Um, you have Rex from Friends. That's a shelf on my Goodreads page. And this is because of Tiffany. Um, rivaling families and a workplace romance. I loved this. Five stars. So I have two more like chunks of books to talk about, but I'm not really going to talk about them because they're going to be in vlogs that I'm going to be filming and posting at the end of December. So, so far I've read three books for a vlog that I'm going to be doing with B over at Mama Needs to Read Romance. We're going to be reading Alien and I'm going to also include monster romances that are holiday themed. So uh, the first one that I read is The Holly King Sacrifice by Chloe Parker. Um, that one's going to be in that video as well as Grumpy Alien Santa. <laughs> Okay, you can look forward to that. And then also Kidnapped by Krampus is going to be in that video as well. So you can look forward to that. And then actually right now when I'm filming, I am doing the novellathon. The novellathon ends tomorrow for me. Um, so I've already read a few books for it. Oh, I forgot to mention, I also read Wed to Jack Frost by Layla Fay, which will be in the video with B. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> Anyway, the three books that I've read so far for Novellathon, A Runaway Bride for Christmas by Sadie King, and then uh, Snowed In with a Dragon by Sarah Ivy Hill, and All I Want for Christmas is a Glitter Orc by Kate Elman. <laughs> so I read those three so far for the Novellathon, um, but I'm not going to talk about them in this video because they're going to be in that vlog for you. So anyways, those are all 15 books that I've read so far in December. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me any baked good emoji in the comment section down below. <laughs> but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all!